All right, welcome to Quick Show. My name is Greg Matson. I am your host. In this episode, we are going to talk about the Feminist Theories class, which is now going to be offered at BYU Provo this fall 2022. Before we get into this, just want to remind everybody, head over to quickmedia.com, cwicmedia.com, and go to the Critical Social Justice page to get some information on how we kind of uh, work between gospel principles and tenets and critical social justice principles and tenets. And you can really see the difference with these things if you start looking at the principles. So go take a look at that page. Now, we have here um, exactly what I had said was going to happen. And this is just uh, the very beginning, I am sure, of numerous other courses that are going to be coming to uh, BYU. It's an expansion, right, of, of where we've been in the past. You've had uh, at BYU, you've got a number of professors that are already inserting the religion of academia into their teaching. Some of them are more radical than others. Some of them slightly mention it. Some of them use the vocabulary, uh, the verbiage of the new religion. And, and that's really what it is. Critical social justice is a religion. It is an ideology. It is a worldview. And it requires a certain sacrifice. It requires has certain tenets. It has certain rituals. And uh, in, in many ways, for those that are real adherents to it, it requires your heart, might, mind, and strength. And it is in direct conflict with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what we need to look at. And that's why I call it the religion of academia. We need to understand what this is. Yes, it's the philosophies of men, but it's, we need to see this as a religion, as a worldview, as an ideology, because it is, it is seeping in as a rival to many gospel principles and to, honestly, the structure even of the church, I would say. So here we have a new course. This is, let's take a look here. If you're on video, you can take a look. I don't have the best image of this, but uh, GWS, which is Global Women's Studies 422, uh, iHumanities 390, and Philosophy uh, 450R. 450R is usually something I think that is being tested as a new course. And it is feminist theories. I'm going to go ahead and read what the course outline says here. It is the course centers on the philosophical and theoretical foundations of feminist thought. Well, that goes back indeed further back than Marx and Engels, but that's really the crux that you're going to get. You can go further back. This is this is not just something that is about, you know, Abigail Adams and, and Susan B. Anthony, right? And when you're talking about feminist theories here, you are talking about, you might as well insert the word critical with a capital C, feminist critical theories. It's about critical theory. It is identitarianism. It is the religion of academia. Again, back to the explanation here or the, the course description. The course centers on the philosophical and rhetorical, theoretical foundations of feminist thought. So you can imagine with this that you're going to have numerous uh, icons of, of feminism, you know, Angela Davis and, and, and Judith Butler and, and, and many others that are going to be likely inserted into here when we're talking about femini feminist theories. A lot of third wave, fe wave feminism you'll probably see in this, which is where we're at today. It is anti-gospel, much of it. I'm not saying that the, the, the instructors are going to completely push against the gospel with this, but feminist theories, if you go to any feminist theories class in, uh, in, in academia, you're, you'll, you'll, you'll be shocked at what you hear. It is anti-family. It is, of course, against whatever you want to uh, discern as the patriarchy. Um, it is anti-mother in many ways. It is, it is not about the opportunity given to women. Who is not for opportunity for women? We are all about opportunity for women. We want opportunity for women. I've got a wife and I've got two daughters. I want them to have full opportunity. My, my, 
my my wife works full time. My oldest daughter works full time. Uh, my I would guess that my youngest daughter will be working full time at least for a portion of that of her adult life, and it, it's not about that. That's not what this feminist fem, feminism is. It's not what feminist theories is about. It it continues here and says the we will approach course materials from an interdisciplinary perspective. Imagine which disciplines they are really going to be bringing in here. It is going to be the hydra, right, of, of relig the religion of academia and, and everything from your queer theory and your feminism and your Marxist tenets um, that will, uh, critical race theory certainly will be a big part of this, um, that will be all a part of the feminist critical theories course. And examine the interplay of global realities and theoretical approaches, exploring how lived experiences, there's our postmodernism, a major part of, of feminism, uh, approach, uh, how lived experiences informs and, co and I'm trying to see what that says there. I think that uh, and complicate or theoretical ambitions, I'm not sure what that says. It's a little fuzzy. Right, so uh, look, it, it's again. This is not a, just about Abigail Adams and Susan B. Anthony. This this is this is a, another incursion into identitarianism from the religion of academia onto the BYU campuses. We're going to see more and more of this. It is a hydra. I've talked about this a lot before. The reason I like the idea of the hydra with critical social justice is because it's a great representation mapping this monster onto the departments, certain departments specifically of, of, of academia. And so you've got several different heads here. You've got, you know, what, what starts off with, uh, with women's studies, and then you're going to have queer theory, and you've got critical race theory, which is the biggest head of them all currently right now. You've got fat studies. You've got uh, ableism, you've got all of these intersectional uh, identities that are being brought in that, that the church is definitely trying to um, put into context right now as they talk so much about identity. But as you bring one of these in, you're not just bringing in one of the heads, like with women's studies. You're bringing in the entire Hydra monster, all of the heads, one by one, two by two, whatever they might be. And here now we see the next head coming in here, which is the, the feminist theories class, which is not just offered in the women's studies department, which, by the way, is under the, the family sciences. Uh, that's kind of funny, isn't it? It's in fam the family sciences college uh, at BYU. But it's, uh, it's also going into philosophy, and uh, I can't remember what the third department was on that. But these several heads are going to coalesce into, a, into what we might call critical social justice. It's, it's, I, they're all under the same umbrella of identitarianism. It is one monster. It is one monster, with, and it's very important to understand, with Marxian tenets at its base, at its core. It is Marxian tenets at its core with several different um, manifestations that come out with different heads through uh, as departments within academia. So the Hydra, it maps onto these departments from academia. And, and you cut one head off, well, there's many others that are going to come in. You bring one head in uh, of the Hydra, then you're going to get many others. And, 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 and unless there's a massive pushback, like as I've said previously, we're going to see all of the heads of the Hydra at BYU. They will all come in. And it's you, you can't get away with it because there's too much co uh, corroboration between each of the heads and each of the departments. It is part of the religion. It is the religion of identitarianism and, and academia. So, for example, if, if, if I am in, in our gospel, in our doctrine, if I'm going to go in and say I'm going to bring in the idea of faith in Jesus Christ in, well, I can't do that without also talking about repentance, right? And I can't, I can't talk about those things without talking about the fall in the Garden of Eden. 
And, and, and I can't do that without talking about the atonement. And, and I can't talk about the atonement without talking about faith, hope, and charity and a look forward to growth and fulfillment and the tree of life and the fruit of the tree of life and exaltation and resurrection. Right, and then I'm gonna be talking about opposition and how we work with that. I talk about pride on one side and humility on the other. It's the same exact thing, it's a religion. And, and they all have their different focuses. And sometimes there is some, you get the heads here of the, of the hydra that will go in and actually attack each other sometimes and push back on things. But the core is all the same, it's all there. And we, we, can, we can count on, I believe, you know, what do I know? But we, we can count on several more of these heads coming in and infiltrating as a virus, because it is a virus, and infiltrating the institution of, of BYU and, and who knows where else. We're going to see it in the church. A lot of times I get a pushback on this about this idea of, well, this is the university. We want our kids to be exposed to these things. And we want our, our, our youth, right, to our young adults to, to learn them in the context of the gospel in, in a safe environment instead of going out and learning them from another place out of context and, and without elements of the gospel put in there. I understand what you're saying, but you're wrong. You are wrong. <laughs> um, you're, you're not going to go out, for example, and create a course at BYU that is called Eat, Drink, and Be Merry, for tomorrow we die, and it shall be well with us. And then go into the curriculum of the course and start showing you how, you know, Eat, Drink, and Be Merry is used and can be used in your life. It's and, and, and supported because this will be a support system for feminist critical theories. It's not going to be brought in and in a gospel ter in a gospel sense of this is what we find so wrong with these feminist critical theories and why they are uh, um, so so antithetical to gospel tenets and principles that we've been taught our whole lives and that are taught to us today, right from from the pulpit and from from uh, uh, the brethren that are taught to us in the scriptures. That's not what it is. So if you go in and you say, or if you come back on this subject, on this debate, and you say, well, it's a university, we want this to be out there, it depends on how it's taught. You can have a course, for example, on Marxism. And you can say, this is what has happened with Marxism, right? Yeah, Marxism was started with you know the first institutionally uh, uh, um, successful place we find Marxism is with Lenin, right? And you go, into, you go into Lenin, you go into Stalin, and then you talk about Pol Pot, and you talk about King Jong, uh, Kim Jong-un, and you talk about King Jong-il, and you talk about Mao, and China, and Castro, and look at all of the problems that this causes, and look how this does not fit. This push toward equity does not work with the gospel. That This is not a gospel tenet then that's great. I wish we did that. I mean, that, that, should be, that should be required coursework for every BYU student. I think it should be required coursework for everyone going to college and high school even in the United States. Uh, that's not what this is. This is in support of these things. This is teaching and indoctrinating these kids, these young adults, into supporting and converting to the religion of academia. There's going to be, it's hard not to imagine that they're not going to be given new icons, right? That they can take, uh, put on their bookmarks of their textbooks, I suppose, or on the back of their uh, their laptops and phones and of, of Charles Fourier and, and Karl Marx and, and uh, uh, Friedrich, Friedrich Engels and Angela Davis and, and, and many others that, that you might find here, Judith Butler and others that you would find in in feminist theories. What if we took this and we taught against it? What if we contrasted the gospel, the words of the prophets, the scriptures, the plan of salvation with feminism? Then I'm on board. Then I'm all on board. 
or even if it was objective, but taught within the framework of the gospel. Not going to happen here. The framework of the gospel teaches us a very important principle, and that is equality of opportunity is essential. We never gain it. We probably never will in this mortal world. Maybe maybe in Zion, right? Maybe in the millennium. I don't know. But that is something we should strive for. That requires charity. It requires sacrifice. It requires effort to give everybody equal opportunity. Equity, on the other hand, what is termed today as justice, which is not really justice. It, it, is, it is equality of outcome. That's what equity is. And so when you have that, those two forces against each other, a gospel-centered force, tenant, principle of equal opportunity, you get to choose and use your agency. That's what we want. Versus we are going to force the outcomes on the back end, and we're going to build these theories from this end instead of the other end where things are forced, which requires always, always tyranny. When you look at the two sides of, of, of equality of opportunity and forced outcome or equity, on the one, time, on the one side with, with uh, equality of opportunity, what you're losing there usually, and this is the problem with it, is charity. You can't do it without charity. That means looking out for the well-being of others. So what we must do is, apart from creating a system, uh, something that we've obtained to a, a large degree in the United States and even the West and as a whole, but it's still not perfect, you have to add charity in there. You can't just have the system. You have to have a charitable people that are going to create that equal opportunity in its execution, in its manifestation, in its practicality. So it requires the development of charity, and that's what we must focus on. However, on the other end of the spectrum, with equity, it does not require any charity. What it requires instead is its opposite, which is tyranny. It has always, always devolved in tyranny. The doctrine of equity has always devolved into tyranny, and it always will. And so if we could teach the difference between those two ends of the spectrum and, and put that into our curriculum, then, then we can have more clarity on things like feminist theories, on things like critical race theory, and understand what their true objective is and from where they are working. There is a great difference, a vast chasm between faith and secularism. Faith is what is taught at, in, in the gospel of Jesus Christ. Secularism discounts faith, removes faith. Feminism is a secular theory and, and fights directly against the gospel of Jesus Christ. We want faith over secularism, not the other way around. They, they, they are, they're, they're, they're in direct conflict. We also want true Christianity, true Christianity over the religion of academia. Thanks for listening.